What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Uncanny Academy of X Men. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am Professor Jared, and today we're going to go through a list. I figured that'd be a nice, like, change of pace from our past couple episodes. So, we are talking about now we're doing a list from comicbookmovie.com. It's the X Men 20 iconic comic book moments. We need to see when the when Marvel Studios reboots the franchise. This is a part two list, but we're going to start from this. Genosha destroyed. Yes. So for those of you that don't know, this was a moment from, I believe it's actually Grant Morrison's X-Men, when um, a, 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 um, this mutant named Cassandra Nova sends a sentinel she, she t- takes over like decrepit sentinel, s- sends it to Genosha, and it completely annihilates the place. In uh, House of X Powers of Ten, there was like an infographic that basically had like all the moments that were like such um, that were lo- that that ended up killing like a lot of mutants or depowering them, and this was like one of them. So I would love to see that as a movie. That'd be really cool. Plus, we have Sentinel, so it's it's possible. Next, Magneto kills Apocalypse. Sorry, right, Apocalypse made his big screen debut in 2016, but it surely won't be much longer before we get to see a rebooted version who is hopefully quite a bit more comic accurate in, in his appearance. As for this particular moment, Charles Xavier is dead, and Magneto has joined the X-Men in a bid to take out the villain and restore the, a previous timeline. Cyclops, Jean Grey, Colossus, Kitty Pride, and more are all killed at the hands of Apocalypse and Magneto, uh, and, and Magneto is the last man standing. As the tyrant gloats over the fallen mutant leader, Magneto uses one final burst of energy fueled by his hatred to literally tear and Sabinor in half. It's a shocking moment which would likely draw gasps in c- cinema as the Marvel Studios could easily use this to, t- to dispatch to dispatch of the villain one day. That'd be interesting. Weapon X. We kind... See, I'm actually going to share my screen. (coughs) Sorry. Okay, so Weapon X. Here's why I'm not so keen on this. We've had many different um, adaptations of... We've had already about, I'd say, two adaptions of... um, of uh weapon x so i'm like i don't think we need this anymore i i think what they're saying is that we want an actual comic book accurate one which okay i i get that but still like we've seen this before mutant revolution possessed by, uh, by the phoenix during the events of avx a movie that would that we'd like to see all by not an actual adaptation i i like that Cyclops killed his former mentor, Charles Xavier, and was imprisoned shortly after, despite the fact that he wasn't in, uh, fully in control at the time. This perceived persecution led to him gaining a huge amount of public support, and it wasn't long until Scott Summers was freed by his allies and became the leader of a new mutant revolution. Marvel has dropped the ball in this particular storyline as time has passed, but seeing Cyclops as an outlaw and inspiring his fellow mutants was something really special and would be a great direction to take the character in regard to whether they use the death of Professor X to inform this new found role or just portray him as that type of figure regardless. That would be really interesting because um, they've done like on the run storylines like in Winter Soldier and such. So, so I think that they could really do well um, placing Cyclops in this type of role. <coughs> Cyclops, uh, I mean, Cyclops, Colossus becomes the Juggernaut. That'd be dope. When the Juggernaut transformed in, uh, into Kurth, but a breaker of stone by Asgardian magic, headed to San Francisco, the X Men needed to act fast to stop the villain before he lays waste to, to the entire city. The already formidable Colossus decided to wield the power of Sederak and becomes the most unstoppable version of Juggernaut to date easily defeating Kane Marco. However, poor Peter would continue to struggle with his newfound abilities and discovered that keeping his newly indestructible nature in check was no easy feat. This would be an awesome direction to take Colossus on screen while we get uh, did get, get to see Juggernaut in Deadpool 2 and Colossus 2. 
the MCU could, could delve into the magical side of his powers thanks to Doctor Strange. That's true. Oh, Astonishing X-Men, which is essentially um, Joss Whedon's X-Men. I think we've had enough. Um, I don't know. Justice Rose, no. Yeah, they're not going to. And when is this list on 2020? Yeah. After everything that came out with Joss Whedon, uh, I get the feeling they wouldn't want to do anything with Joss Whedon. Although I do like this team of X-Men, particularly Emma Frost. I think that it'd be really cool to see them do her again. Do, do her as a character like that. Magneto joins the X-Men. Yeah, that'd be really cool that they could finally show that and not have, a, have it immediately reversed in the next movie because that was the problem that I found with the first class era of movies is that so Magneto joins the... Um, so Magneto is like an ally, leaves and becomes the, the antagonist, becomes an ally, leaves and, beco- and becomes an antagonist, becomes an ally, leaves and becomes an antagonist. It, it just went back. It's the same overall plot but with a uh, uh, but with a different skin essentially number three no more mutants yes i would love to have a house of house of m moment that would a hundred percent be dope in fact what you could do what would be interesting is if here's how marvel could bring in the mutants they use scarlet witch but she wants more like her so she goes more mutants they could establish that that that, that she is a, the only one with a genetic mutation. She and her family, so, so you have a Magneto and such and Quicksilver. But she goes, "I want more people like me." And then you have her say, "More mutants." See, it that way it would be an interesting little little um, switch. On uh, it would be a play off the House of M storyline. Magneto on trial. What's this one? Magneto um, always um, does. Marvel always do something special for their anniversary issue, issues, and Uncanny X Men 200 was no exception. This one featured Magneto being put on trial at the United Nations Tribunal, and it's not hard to imagine how well this. Uh, th- I think this would be kind of boring. He's an innocent, and it's up to X Men to defend him from both human me- in distance. Oh, yeah, that'd be interesting, but yeah. Age of Apocalypse. Yes, I think that'd be really cool. That'd be really dope to put that on there. That alternate timeline. So let me unshare. I'm not done yet because that was part two. We're going to go to part one. So I just have to go back. I agree with a lot of these. There are a few of them where I'm like, yeah, that wouldn't work. Like the Weapon X, we've seen that before. Either way, uh, eventually um, people just have to move on with that. So let me see. Let's go to IGN. Now we're going to the 25 greatest moments in X-Men history. <coughs> Sorry about that, everyone. All right. So. So here are the moments. All right. Is that it? Well, no more mutants. House of M. Yeah, that was great. This is a really poorly put, put together list you know what i'm not doing this let me undo this because this list is really terrible let me see all uh, all the x-men events the top 11 uh i'm trying to find the right list for this let me see um let's see uh let's go with Let's go with, uh, geez. That's why it was from 2006. That's why it's not well put together. Let's go from what culture? The 10 most badass Wolverine moments. All right. So let me share the screen. We can get to work on this. All right. The original fastball special. Yes. And we have yet to actually see this. Because it would be really cool to actually see it in live action. Because what we got in um, at, in the movies was just seeing Wolverine uh, flying through the air. Not like him actually being thrown. I want to see the whole thing. Next. Lobotomizing the Hulk. Yeah, that would be so cool. An R-rated movie. I would love to see that. So, uh, okay. 
one of the best fights the two have had comes from the anthology series Salvage Wolverine and its fifth issue featuring Wolverine teaming up with Amadeus Cho and Shauna the She-Devil to prevent the destruction of a machine that's keeping one of the Savage Land's b- b- biggest monsters from breaking free and killing everyone. However, the monster is clever and has been luring people here to destroy the machine for it. And Wolverine pr- proves too stubborn to control, instead chooses a more explosive candidate, the, the Hulk. The Hulk comes to the Savage Land and in true Hulk fashion just starts destroying anything in the general direction of the machine. Hulk fights Wolverine and, and these two team up uh, uh, um, and his two team up uh, uh, buddies, tossing them around like a salad. Not for, uh, seeing another option, Wolverine leaps onto the Hulk at the last second and runs his claws straight through the Hulk skull, lobotomizing him. Now it didn't. It, so now this is still the Hulk we're talking about. So he regenerates pretty quick, and he had already destroyed the machine enough to uh, for Beast to, to get uh, free. Besides, but, but but lobotomizing the freaking Hulk is still a, a pretty boss move. I agree with that. That's pretty dope. That would have to be R-rated. Taking on the Hellfire Club. Kind of got that in the... Um, let's see this. Um, okay, so it would be like Wolverine completely annihilating people. Yeah, I could see that. The interrogation. Oh, yes. We kind of saw this in the movies, but yeah, I like that. That that was a pretty badass Wolverine moment where he just stabs the arrow that's like infused with like venom into the dude's hand after he like cuts him. Cutting off Sabretooth's head. Yes. I would love to see this in an R-rated version. Rejecting a brood egg. Broods are, broods are basically the Marvel version of Xenomorphs, for those of you that know the aliens. The, most, the broods are one of the most disturbing creations that Claremont ever came up with for the X-Men mythos. Uh, they are essentially the, the Xenomorphs, there you go, with their favorite hobbies include laying eggs in people so that the people can the, be sustenance for the hatch brew when they're born. So with that said, it's really no wonder the brood see Wolverine and decide um, that a guy whose body never stops regenerating would make the perfect meal. So Wolverine eventually finds himself infected with a brood egg while trying to save his friends and these hard creatures. This is where root eaters are given for the first time a true glimpse of what it's like to have one of those things in your body and not just rooting on your guts, but also infecting your mind with its consciousness. However, Wolverine manages to use this to his advantage, eventually getting the better of the monster and destroying it while still inside him, overwhelming it with a sheer force of will because Wolverine is just that badass. That's true. That that does sound pretty dope. Fighting the hand, which are basically ninjas. Wolverine's been around for a while. Uh, This is from Frank Miller's Wolverine. The hand have always been a favorite plot device for their creator, Frank Miller. So naturally, uh, when he and Chris Claremont teamed up for the Glorious Wolverine miniseries, they revealed that Wolverine actually had a connection to the hand, as used to to date a woman by the name of Mariko. All right. So the way they do this, which is funny, this is pretty much the Wolverine movie. And Mariko eventually becomes Deathstrike. So uh, I, I think that's re- that that would be, we have seen that in movies and it is so good and the comic is really good too. Taking down the Hulk, Old Man Logan. Yes. So Old Man Logan. So what happens in Old Man Logan is when um, so Wolverine is tricked by I believe it's Mysterio into killing the X Men, and then, and then the the super villains take over the world. They kill all the superheroes and take over. Wolverine vows never to pop his claws again. He settles down and has a family. And then, so he ends up in the te- tenement of the Hulk, that the Hulk and his family, which uh, his uh, the Hulk's kids were inbred with She-Hulk, which I find weird. But so, um, the Hulk kills Wolverine's family. But what's so cool... <coughs> Is what Wolverine does is he gets eaten by the Hulk. Then he pops his claws in the in the Hulk and cuts his way out. So I'm like, oh yes. Destroy the mother mold, House of X. Yes, because and we covered House of X, <coughs> where he at where the, they know they have to take out this mother mold at, at all costs. And the mother mold basically makes master molds, which makes sentinels. So if this thing gets online, it will make um 
It will make an unlimited supply of Sentinels, which then leads to the destruction of the mutant race and everyone else, if you read um, uh, Days of Future Past. So what's cool about this is that Wolverine and Nightcrawler, knowing the gravity of the situation, so the space station making the mother mold is over the moon, is over the sun. So Wolverine has Nightcrawler teleport him into space. Nightcrawler is incinerated, and Wolverine just cuts the the, the mother mold out, and then they just um, then they just um, fall into the sun, which is. Really, really cool. And then he survived a nuke in X Men Origins Wolverine. Yeah, that was fan- not, not, not X Men Origins actually, just the movie The Wolverine, that which was one of the coolest moments of that movie, where like he covers the dude when the atomic bomb is being dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and then what he does is is he he lifts up the door that he was using as a shield. Then essentially, you see like Wolverine is all burnt, like really, 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 really like fifth degree burns, if that's possible. And then you see him regenerating. And I, I just love that you see even his hair regrowing, which I think that's a, that was a really cool like instance of showing how like insane this dude's regeneration is. And on that note, I see if there's one more list I want to do, and then we can actually call it a night. I probably am going to call it a night, but let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll call it a night. So anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed those two lists. Um, so actually, you know I'll do one more. I'll do one more. One of the most, uh, let me see, Core, one of the most badass moments in comic book history. No. I am trying to find a really, really good uh, um, thing here. All right. 15 Wolverine quotes that prove he's the best X-Man. I'm the best at what uh, I, I'm the best there is at what I do. And what I do isn't very nice. Yes, I love that one. Patience isn't my strong suit. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. So he's being sent back in time by Professor X in the Days of Future Past movie. And he goes, you have to show patience. And all this. And he's like, yeah, that's not my thing. He's like, your best is enough. Trust me. Okay, that yeah, that was cool. Looks like Stryker finally found a way to shut you up. That's when the travesty that was, that was uh, X-Men Origins Deadpool shows up. And he goes, fill your heart w- w- with... B- 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 um, yeah. Better memories, better actions, better friends. All right, that works. That's good. Nature made me a freak. Man made me a weapon, and God made it last too long. That's fine. All right. The pain lets you know you're still alive. Yeah, that's true. That's a saying. I mean, I was watching, like, G.I. Jane, and, like, and they say, you know what's the best part about pain? It lets you know you're not dead yet. It's all in your brain. This one, this is someone's the story. Wolverine's on the hunt for some villains who have taken some children hostage. Unfortunately, he didn't make it in time to rescue all the kids, which ignites his murderous vengeance. I love that. One of the antagonists has previously repeatedly claimed not to feel pain anymore as he trained himself to accept the pain manifested only in his mind. Wolverine then went straight to the source and proceeded to kill the man by clawing away his head, then quipped. That was all in the guy's brain after all. Oh, yes, I I love this one. So I'm talking about X-Men 3. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sharing the screen real quick. And um, he's fighting this dude that regenerates like really fast whenever he like cuts off his arms because he cuts off the arms and they grow right back. So Wolverine kicks them in the nuts and then goes, grow those back. I love that. So anyway, also an X-Men origins Wolverine, which despite being a travesty of an X-Men movie, it was still pretty entertaining had this fantastic scene where so Wolverine's fighting Sabretooth and Sabretooth is like, well, you can't kill me. I heal just like you. So, so, um, so uh, uh, Wolverine's like, I'm going to cu- cut your head off. See if that works. And I love where X-Men one, he first hears about Magneto and he goes, what's a Magneto? And I'm like, all right. No, uh, uh, I'm going through these to make sure that uh, I'm skipping through a lot of these. 
Oh yeah, X Men Origin uh, X <laughs> Logan, which was when it's basically the old man Logan movie kind of, and he meets X twenty three, and his last words to her were, um, "Don't don't be what they made you." So it's kind of like don't be a weapon. So I like that. And X two he goes, then we stand together, all of us X Men. I like that. And then okay, a su- uh, suckers, you took your your best shot. Now it's my turn. That's from the comics. And that's the last. Oh, okay. He swears his revenge in the Hellfire Club. All right. So those are some of the best Wolverine quotes. Hope you guys enjoyed this, these lists. We will start p- putting in more of these l- list episodes um, in the show if it's popular. I'll be doing the same thing on Star Wars. Under Two Capes is doing pretty well. Um So yeah, like, comment, subscribe helps us out. Let us know what content you like, what content you don't like. You can email us at comicsleague2020 at gmail.com. You can go on our website at at comicsleague.com. And uh, you can follow us at comicsleague2021 on Instagram. And you can follow me at justicelord114 on Twitter. And that's, that's all I got in terms of like admin stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next week. Class set of session. Bye-bye.